Yo, what's poppin' everyone? Welcome back to the channel, Zach Lesage here. Today we're gonna be covering over the top 10 best decks in the Shrouded Fable formats. Shrouded Fable is releasing as we speak on PTCG Live. It's coming out in stores. So these decks are really on the cusp of being legal for competitive play. This is a great video for you to jumpstart your testing on the format, build some of these decks and copy and paste them into PTCG Live. Now I do want to say if you are copying and pasting any of the lists that are available in the pinned comment, they might not necessarily transfer well because we're going from the Japanese translations over to the English translations. So feel free to look at the lists available in this video, which will be covering over the top 10 decks with lists included. Um, and you can kind of manually input them for any cards that might be an error. That being said, I'm really excited to kind of go over all of these decks. These are decks that I've been testing for worlds myself. And let's jump into our number 10 pick. Kicking off our list at number 10 is going to be Snorlax Control. Now, this is going to be a similar Snorlax list that I've been covering in these Shrouded Fable builds, and I don't really see a reason why to change it. Uh, we got Cornerstone Ogre Pawn EX in an attacking role in this deck. So Snorlax does take on a fairly new form, being able to uh, attach a Fighting and a Double Turbo to your Cornerstone, so you can knock out pesky Pokemon like Duskull that can really get through our Cornerstone Ogre Pawn. We have a lot of different ways that we can uh, kind of win the game, whether it's through bringing up our opponent's Pokemon with block, stopping them in their tracks, Cornerstone Ogre Pawn might be able to tackle an entire deck like Charizard, and Mimikyu might do the exact same thing. The strategy of this deck is going to be really similar to other versions of the deck where we're trying to mill through our opponent's resources, bring up important Pokemon, um, and just keep on putting on pressure onto our opponents. Now, I think Snorlax is at number 10 because Jap Japan has been kind of a best of one-esque format right now. Might do a little bit better at the World Championships. However, Snorlax can be a difficult deck to play um, in the amount of time necessary to complete games. That being said, we got to start off somewhere. Snorlax is going to be at number 10 this week. And what you should be doing right now is putting your best guesses for decks 9 all the way up to number one in the comments below. See if you get it right. See if there's any decks that I might be missing. And of course, we do get back to all comments. If you need any of the cards for these decks in the video, be sure to check out our sponsors at Kayfabe Cards, our sponsors at PTCGL Store, the TSS website, and of course, our newest sponsor, GameStop. Check out your local neighborhood GameStop, tell them Shuffle Squad sent you, and we'll see exactly uh, what that does. But either way, they got some Pokemon products at most of their stores, so check that out. Let's jump into number nine. Coming back from uh, relatively the dead is going to be Dialga V-Star. So Dialga V-Star won Indianapolis Regionals, and now we're really seeing it where it did not really do too much after that once we got Twilight Masquerade, and here we get it again. Well, with Charizard being a, the number one deck in format for a while now, um, and really kind of seeing a resurgence at Cups, resurgence in the Japanese metagame, um, Dialga kind of comes back and is like, hey, I, I like good matchups. We're going to have some good matchups. It doesn't really gain too much from this set. If we look at it like last uh, deck we saw with Snorlax, Snorlax gained like one card, which was the new Zerosa card. Here we gained the Pheasantipity EX, and we're able to uh, draw some cards after our opponent uh, knocks out one of our Pokemon, giving us a little bit more consistency when we have it. I, I don't really see how the deck gets worse in any capacity. If anything, we're just going to be loading up energies onto our Origin Form Dialga V-Star, maybe taking an extra turn. And when Dust Noir is arguably the most powerful card in the game, we have an opportunity for our opponent to pop prize cards, and we take an extra turn, really pushing this deck to the limits. Hanging in there at number eight is going to be Lost Zone Box. Now, Lost Zone Box is going from one of the best decks in format in the Twilight Masquerade format, all the way down towards the bottom of our top 10. Now, I think there's gotta be something like 20, 25 or so viable decks in our format. So number eight is nothing to scoff at, still a relatively high placement out of those super competitive decks in the format that didn't even make the top 10 decks list. Why is it falling down so much? Well, our strategy isn't really changing. We're still using Comfey, Colris, Lost Vacuum, and we're using that core of Andrew's winning NEIC list and really going to rip some cards into our Lost Zone, attack with four at Cramorant, accelerate energies at seven with Mirage Gate, and then do 10 uh, in the Lost Zone to snipe with Sableye, having a variety of attackers in between that. Well, 
The thing that we gotta watch out for is the new Kyurem that's come out in Shrouded Fable, that if our opponent has played a Colrus, which if we play Colrus, we totally can activate that, for a single colorless energy, they can pitch it away and snipe 110 at three of our Pokemon. That's enough to knock out Confei, Sableye, Cramorant, and I mean, if they have Cancel and Clone, even the Manaphy. So with Cancel and Clone being very popular in some builds that have Kira, and there are a couple of them, um, we have to put this deck down a little bit. Now, if Kira isn't really going to see too much success, I can really see this deck still seeing success into our formats. Next up in our top 10 is going to be Lugia V-Star. Now, Lugia V-Star has not really changed at all. There's actually no new cards in this deck from Shrouded Fable at all. Well, one thing that has changed is the metagame. There are quite a few Stage 2 Pokemon EX decks that are towards the upper half of the successful decks. Dragapult EX, Dust Noir, Charizard EX, and that means that Chinchino is a fantastic attacker into those Pokemon. And of course, we still have opportunities to utilize cards such as Mist Energy to prevent damage counters from being put onto our Pokemon from our opponent's attacks. In this case, we've also gone with Wellspring Ogre Pond EX to maybe doubly snipe some of our opponent's Pokemon. We have Boss's Orders to be incredibly aggressive. And Lugia is kind of that middle of the road catch all kind of deck that can just be consistent. We're going to be still utilizing our same strategy of discarding Archeops with cards such as Professor's Research, Ultra Ball, summoning those Archeops into play with Lugia's V Star ability, and of course, loading up those energies onto our various Pokemon. I think this is a really good build for this list. And if you're not really sure what you're going to be playing for Worlds, Cups, Challenges, anything in our Shrouded Fable formats, Lugia just might be the play for you. A returning favorite at number 6 is going to be Chen Pao EX. And Chen Pao EX, it didn't really change too too much, but we did get a couple new additions in the form of Pheasantipity EX and of course Night Stretcher. Both of those cards can really add a lot to the deck, whereas Pheasantipity gives us an opportunity to be that standalone basic barrel esque Pokemon and Night Stretcher giving us an opportunity to get back our energy or maybe one of our Pokemon that had fallen on a previous turn. Nothing better than getting a Chen Pao EX knocked out, using Night Stretcher, getting it back, and then knocking out your opponents again. You punch us, we're going to punch back twice as hard. Well, the strategy is going to stay relatively the same. We're still going to go ahead and go back Scalibur, accelerate all of our energies onto our Chen Pao and other various Pokemon, and really, really, really try to knock out our opponent's Pokemon. Where things might have changed a little bit with the list is changing some of the Bidoofs from the 60 HP to the 70 HP version. Sure, you might have another doubly retreat cost Pokemon instead of a single retreat cost Pokemon, but you might be able to survive that Dragapult turn two from a Regid Drago or just a Dragapult EX deck. We gotta be careful when it comes to these Pokemon with uh, limited HP um, in this format, especially when cards like Dust Noir, Dragapult EX, Halucha, and other damage modifiers do exist. I think Chen Pao is one of those decks that beats quite a few decks up top, so I wouldn't be surprised if this one rises from the ranks in our next week's video where we're gonna go over the updated ranking. At the halfway mark of our list, we have Gardevoir EX. Similar to Chen Pao, we didn't really gain too much from the set. We just gained Night Stretcher. And that means that if our Screamtail, Fluttermane, Drifloon, any of these Pokemon get knocked out, we could just go ahead, bring them back, and uh, just get it back. Do we need an energy from our discard pile, like a Darkness energy, or maybe even just a Gardevoir? Sure, we can get those back too. So it gives us a little bit of flexibility, and since it's searchable by Arvin, it does give us an opportunity to grab that card out. Gardevoir doesn't really necessarily have the greatest matchup spread, but it doesn't necessarily have a bad matchup spread. It's kind of just fallen into this middle ground where it's quite literally one of the best decks in format, but it's not necessarily the most well-positioned deck right now. Is that going to change before Worlds? Very well could. The strategy of this deck is going to remain relatively the same. We're going to be using Curlia to pitch and draw cards, um, and that's going to be our main draw engine of the deck. We're going to use Gardevoir EX to add damage counters to our various Pokemon in play, accelerate energies while doing so, and then we have a different attacker necessary for a lot of decks, such as Screamtail or Drifloon, where we can scale damage, snipe damage, whatever we really need. I think Gardevoir is one of those decks where I don't necessarily see it as the best deck right now, but would it be surprising to see this deck win Worlds? Not really. So it's one of those things where if you're a Gardevoir fan, you're probably more in tune with this deck than other players are. If you're a person that's kind of put Gardevoir off on the side and been like, yeah, I respect you, Gardevoir, but you're not my favorite deck, you might be like, yeah, this deck's probably middle of the road. 
We'll have to see how it goes, but right now we have Gardevoir at number five. Let me know what you think about it. Again, be sure to give this video a like, share, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you think about the top 10 best decks list so far. And don't forget to put in your best guesses for the top four best decks heading up right now. Let's jump into that number four pick. Moving down from the number two spot to the number four spot over the past couple weeks is going to be Dragapult EX. Now this is a deck in my testing where it's like, undeniably I think Dragapult is good. I actually won a league challenge with a Dragapult deck in our Twilight Masquerade format. A lot of my friends and fellow TSS members like Cyrus Davis have been crushing it with a Dragapult Zatu, but here we have it in our Shrouded Fable where we've gained Dust Noir, Dusk Lops, and Dusk All on this list. And we're able to kind of go with an extra kind of spready, snipey feel when it comes down to it. Nothing else really that's got added into this list. Like sure, we're going with Mela as our energy acceleration method, but we're able to search through the pieces. We're able to spread a little bit harder with Dragapult EX. And maybe that's going to be working for ourselves. Maybe it's not. I feel like this build is like, sometimes it falls a little bit flat. I'm not sure if it's the deck list, the archetype, however it works out. But for me, in terms of it, when Dragapult sets up, it's arguably one of the most scariest decks in format because you're two-shotting most decks. But now we can just pop a Dust Noir, do knock out your opponent's active Charizard and snipe their bench. I think having that doubly snipe kind of options and especially having double uh, Dusk All in the deck really opens up a lot of plays for us to take multiple prize cards in the turn or put our opponent in a terrible spot. Is this deck going to be one of the secret decks for Worlds or one of the most uh, played decks at Worlds? Honestly, I'm not sure. I think you're either Team Dragapult or you're Team Charizard and we'll have to see how that plays out. Um, and maybe there's a world where they both work well together. However, I think Dust Noir has kind of taken that side spot as the partner for both decks, and we'll have to see which one kind of clashes to see the most success. For what is a surprising turn of events for me in seeing what the number three deck would be is Raging Bolt EX. Now, Raging Bolt is one of those things where it's been seeing a lot of success in the Twilight Masquerade format. We're going to be loading up energies with Teal Mask Ogre Pond, Professor Sada's Vitality, and then unloading them with Bellowing Thunder on Raging Bolt EX. We've gained uh, one new card in Fezzidipity EX, so we're able to draw a few more cards um, after our opponent knocks out one of our Pokemon. We're already all two prize cards down on the board anyways, so we don't really care about the liability too much. And we're really just trying to outspeed our opponent with Bellowing Thunder using cards like Pokemon Catcher and Boss's Orders to throw our opponent off on our trail. Well, where this deck is seeing a lot of success against some of these Stage 2 Pokemon EX decks, like Dragapult EX, or even other decks like Regidrago. So in terms of positioning, Raging Bull EX seems to be doing quite well in this format, and maybe, just maybe, it's going to see a little bit more success at Worlds. It's a fun deck to play, relatively easy to set up, so I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a lot of it. It does have one tough matchup, and that's going to be Charizard EX, but we might be getting into that a little bit more in this video and in other deck guides that we have on our channel. Be sure to check it out and see exactly what we have going on, but we're going to be going up to our number two deck right now. Here we have our number two deck in the Shrouded Fable format, and that is Regidrago V-Star. Now, Regidrago V-Star is really moving up the ranks. It was already one of the top decks in the Twilight Masquerade format, and it's becoming a little bit better, in my opinion, in the Shrouded Fable format. Where we've really changed the deck is added in two new dragon type pokemon from shrouded fable that we can copy with our attack so we can copy the discarded dragon type pokemon in our discard pile first one that we're going to be copying is going to be haxorus now haxorus knocks out a pokemon with a special energy so if you run into a dragapult you can just knock them out for a single attack uh just because they had neo upper energy attached maybe you can knock out a lugia as long as they don't have a mist energy attached and i'm sure you'll run into other cases where it's also incredibly good is when you're able to go 230 damage against another Pokemon. You'd be surprised how many times I've been able to knock out a Teal Mask Ogre Pawn, a Red Drago V, or anything in play where it's more efficient than a Gyratina V-Star. Kyurem gives us an opportunity to pitch all of our energies off the Red Drago V-Star and snipe 110, 110, 110. So if that Charizard or Dragapult or any deck that has a lot of these basic Pokemon does not put a Manaphy down in play, or maybe we'll be even able to get off the Canceling Cologne Prime Catcher play, we can just really rip their board in two and steal games. The thing that's tough is going second in Regidrago Mirror because you want to go first so you're able to get the first attack off. 
If you miss that turn two attack, it just goes back into your opponent, making the mirror a fairly toxic matchup. I think this deck is going to be one of the most popular decks of the world championships due to its incredible high amount of different attacks that you could do, and of course, how consistent the deck can be with cards like Squawkabilly and Fezzendipity. I think this deck is super awesome, one of my top choices for worlds, and of course, it has a pretty good matchup against our number one deck in format. What deck do you think it is? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, let's jump into it here. The best deck in the Shrouded Fable format is Charizard EX, the best deck in the Shrouded Fable format. It's gained Dust Noir, so we're able to kind of pop Dust Noir, activate more damage for Charizard EX, and also activate cards such as Countercatcher, Defiance Band, Roxanne, and Iono. I've changed the deck up a little bit since maybe the last time you saw it, and I'm gonna go with the trend of the decks that I've seen in Japan. We're going with five energies in Charizard. You gotta be very clear of what resource you have left, but if we're able to go Charizard, Knockout, Dust Noir, Knockout, we may not necessarily need as many resources to finish games. We kind of have every single card that I want in this list, maybe not uh, Technical Machine V Evolution, which is going in and out of my list all the time, but in terms of just like a functioning list that seems incredibly powerful, we have Charizard EX with Dust Noir. Loading up our energies with Charizard, attacking with Charizard, Pidgeot searches out whatever we want, and Dust Noir can help us get to that next number of damage counters, or if we want to uh, snipe something on the bench, we also have that as an opportunity as well. I think this deck has pretty much every single thing going for it. It's incredibly difficult to play. Um, now with the new Dust Noir, Dust Clops line, giving you a lot of opportunities for um, open gameplay. But you wanna know what? It's not always easy being the best deck. And I think that um, when it's a little bit more difficult, it makes it really worthwhile, makes some game strategic. And of course, it's, uh, it, it's, it's just a blast to play. We got Charizard, one of the OG starter trios as the best deck in format. Let me know what you think. Again, all lists are available in the pinned comments, so you can copy and paste those right into any simulator. You might be able to go into PTCG Live. However, feel free to take some screenshots from this video, and um, you can kind of manually input there as well. If you need any cards, check out our sponsors at Kayfabe Cards, the TSS website, PTCGL Store for your online code card needs, and of course, GameStop, or your local neighborhood GameStop probably has Pokemon cards too. That being said, let me close things out. And there you have it, Zard is still on top. A lot of these lists are staying relatively the same. We do want to say that Shrouded Fables is a mini set, so it's not necessarily going to be groundbreaking for every deck in format. There have been some shifts, there have been some changes, but with Japan playing in their Stellar Miracle, Stellar Crown kind of format now, and we're quickly going to be getting that set in September, we got to be able to understand that this format might be short-lived for Worlds, some League Cups and League Challenges, and maybe a handful of Regionals. So I really hope that you enjoyed watching all of this. Did you get it right in the comments below? Did you put the top 10 right decks in order? Were there any decks that you think I missed? Let me know, let's spark a discussion, and we'll stay tuned for the next video. As for me, um, I'm probably gonna start covering over some new um, deck profiles now that the set's going to be available on ptcg live so stay tuned for that for um, myself and the rest of the squad i'll catch up with all y'all later peace out and have a great one want to support the shuffle squad be sure to check out all of our sponsors in the description to pick up pokemon tcg singles sealed and ptcg live codes made it to the end thank you so much for watching this entire video from the shuffle squad honestly from the bottom of our hearts we appreciate each and every person that supports our content watches what we have going on every single day every single week even from time to time and uh, continuously allows us to have a forum to project our creative content towards the pokemon tcg community so if you haven't already be sure to give this video a like subscribe to the channel and even leave a comment to help boost the YouTube algorithm. That being said, we'll catch you with our next video. Thanks again. Take it easy.